So while, while we're waiting for the slides, I spent most of my professional career taking care of sick people. So from 1995 until 2017, I was either training or practicing as an intensive care doc. And I ran parts of health systems and I did research and I came to Google, I've been there almost eight years and I joined the group, I joined as a principal scientist in one of the groups that invents new kinds of AI for Google to use. And I spent a lot of time map making and sense making about what the, how, how to put the history of AI together. And I'm gonna try to share that with you all over the next few minutes. I feel like we, we may solve AI, but whether we will solve AV remains to be another, another day. There we go. So close. I promise we tried this before and it worked, but we will let everyone watch while we fix it. The very first time I came to Google, I was still at, um, at the University of Chicago and they could not make the projector work and somehow it helped like me as a doctor feel better that it wasn't, it wasn't just me. Um, so we're gonna talk about the three epics of artificial intelligence and we're gonna start 75 years ago. Uh, with Alan Turing, and so he, he's one of the foundational figures of artificial intelligence. The idea of the Turing test came from Alan Turing, and this is the paper that it came from, uh, published in 1950, and the, the Turing test is really well known. But what's not well known is that this paper cited only nine other papers, and one of them was from the British Medical Journal from the Lister Oration at the Royal College of Surgeons in 1949 by Professor Jefferson on the mind of mechanical man. And you can see there's a dialectic between Turing and Jefferson at the very beginning. And so if you only remember one thing from what I say, it's this. It's that artificial intelligence and medicine have been intertwined from literally the beginning, that what you're struggling with today is not something new. It's been going on since the foundation of artificial intelligence. The two fields are intertwined. So I, I have only three things for you today. The history of the two fields is, is related. The second is that there have been three major epochs of AI over the past 75 years and that the differences matter and I'll try and tell you a little bit about them today. And the third thing is that the AI that's happened today is different than what came before, and it is a step change from the AI of the 2010s. And I wanna leave everyone in the room with a little bit of a feeling and a, and, a, and a gestalt of that. And so mostly what I'm gonna talk about is a paper we did a year ago in JAMA about the, this three-part framework or the three epics. This is the core figure from the paper for people who want to go read it, but here's the important part. Each epic's models learn differently. And so the first epic is traditional programming, AI 1.0, and you would write a set of rules for this. And so we're gonna try and tell the difference between a puppy, a small dog, and a muffin, a breakfast pastry. And we would write rules for this, right? A puppy has four legs, a muffin has zero. A puppy has one tail, uh, you know, a muffin has zero. And I can hear you saying in your head, this is a silly task. But the real world is very messy and very difficult. And people who work in AI sometimes forget how messy and difficult the real world is, especially in healthcare. And so it turned out that when AI 1.0 encountered the real world, it was very brittle. It could do some amazing things, but it was very brittle. But AI 2.0, the era of, of deep learning, of convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks, began really in around 2011 or 2012 with this major technical advance where Suddenly it worked. And how is it trained? Well, you give it a bunch of examples from the real world. Here's a photo, this is a puppy, this is a muffin, this is a muffin, this is a puppy. And you come back to the computer that's learned the pattern and you say, what is this? It says 99% muffin, 1% puppy. But if you're not careful, if you showed a picture of a sofa or an automobile, it will tell you, because it's been trained on puppies and muffins, that it's 99% muffin and 50% puppy. But it, we saw a set of amazing things come out of this, which we'll talk about in a minute. AI 3.0 came into being with the invention of the transformer architecture, 
invented something like 275 meters from my desk where I work now. And it's trained remarkably differently. You say, go read this giant stack of papers and documents and books and learn a semantic representation of the knowledge and then come back. Say, what is a puppy? And it will explain what a puppy is and a muffin and it will help you understand the difference between the two. It's foundationally different. 